Hello, I'm Dean Potter and I am a pediatric surgeon at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, as a pediatric surgeon, I perform surgery on uh, children. And one of the main focuses of my uh, career is inflammatory bowel disease. And I'm here to talk to you uh, today about uh, surgery on patients with a particular type of inflammatory bowel disease called Crohn's disease. Uh, as you likely already know, Crohn's disease is an inflammatory condition that can involve any part of the GI tract from your mouth all the way to the anus. Uh, and from a surgical standpoint, that can be very complicated at times to take care of. Uh, uh, we cannot cure Crohn's disease with surgery. Therefore, the major role for surgery uh, in patients with Crohn's disease is to treat the complications of Crohn's disease. Uh, so, um, for example, uh, there are really three major areas that we take care of from a surgical standpoint in patients with Crohn's disease. And the most common area is the ileum or the distal small bowel. And in general, we refer to this as ileoclonic Crohn's disease. And there are really two main complications that happen with patients with ileocolonic Crohn's disease. And the first is uh, stricturing disease. Uh, so if the medications aren't controlling the disease or maybe you haven't, uh, you had a late diagnosis of Crohn's disease and there's already a stricture present and you have a bowel obstruction. Uh, so you have crampy abdominal pain, you're not able to eat, maintain your nutrition. Uh, then uh, surgery is uh, performed to remove that disease portion of uh, bowel. And the surgery that is performed is called an ileocecectomy. So we remove a portion of the ileum and the beginning of the colon called the cecum. Uh, so an ileocecectomy. Uh, that procedure these days is most commonly performed laparoscopically, so with small incisions. Uh, and in general, if you are healthy enough, your nutrition uh, status is good enough, uh, then we can put the two ends of the bowel together, uh, the ileum to the colon, and you don't have to have an ileostomy. Occasionally, if you're uh, too ill, uh, have a uh, bad bowel obstruction, uh, in general, we might have to remove the ileum, uh, ileum and the cecum and perform an ileostomy for a brief period of time before we can put those two uh, pieces of bowel together. So the second, other, uh, the second complication that can happen to people with ileoclonic Crohn's disease uh, is uh, fistula uh, or an infection. So uh, Crohn's, patients with Crohn's disease uh, have a tendency to fistulize, uh, and the way that tends to present is an infection inside the tummy or the abdomen uh, that requires antibiotics and uh, occasionally a, a percutaneous drain. And in general, patients that have fistulizing ileocolonic Crohn's disease uh, eventually require surgery uh, to get rid of that diseased portion of uh, bowel. And again, it's very similar to the obstructive uh, or stricturing uh, ileocolonic Crohn's disease in that we remove the diseased portion of ileum, the cecum, and then usually hook the two ends of the bowel together uh, so that uh, an ileostomy is usually not used in a patient with uh, ileocolonic Crohn's disease. So that's by far the most common type of Crohn's disease that we see in children. Um, the second most common type is uh, colonic Crohn's disease or isolated colonic Crohn's disease. And that involves maybe 10 or so percent of patients that we see here at Mayo Clinic. Um, and those patients tend to present with uh, chronic abdominal pain, diarrhea, uh, bloody diarrhea, uh, and malnutrition. Uh, so very similar to ulcerative colitis, except uh, that it's Crohn's disease. And um, in general, uh, we do not operate on patients with colonic Crohn's disease unless they're medically refractory uh, to medications. Uh, and if that's, uh, that's the case, if you're refractory to your medications and you're too sick to go to school or even be at home, uh, then uh, we tend to have two options uh, for you. Uh, the first would be something called a diverting ileostomy. Uh, so we do not remove any bowel. All we do is go in laparoscopically, pull up uh, the end of the small bowel called the ileum, and you have a, a stoma where the stool would go into a, a bag for a period of time. So that's called a diverting ileostomy. The second option is to perform what's called a subtotal colectomy or a total abdominal colectomy where the right colon, the middle colon, and the end of the colon are removed and we leave the rectum inside uh, your body and pull up an end ileostomy or the end of the small bowel. And that was uh, usually left in place for a series of months. 
And we've looked at patients with uh, our children with uh, colonic Crohn's disease here at Mayo Clinic, and we've compared the diverting ileostomy patients to the patients that had a, a colectomy with ileostomy. And despite the colectomy with ileostomy being a bigger operation, uh, patients tend to do better uh, after removal of that diseased colon. Uh, their pain goes away, uh, their anemia or low blood level improves, and their nu nutritional parameters improve. Whereas uh, uh, patients with a diverting ileostomy tended to remain anemic longer, their nutritional status didn't improve as quickly. Uh, uh, so in general, we tend to pref uh, prefer the colectomy with and ileostomy. However, that's a decision that's made uh, between uh, the family and a gastroenterologist and the surgery team to see what's best uh, for each patient. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is in the patients that have had colectomies with end ileostomies, about half of those patients did go on to have their ileostomy taken down and reconnected to their rectum. And that surgery is called an ileorectostomy. Uh, so that way you would stool normally uh, through your bottom. And in general, those patients had uh, six or seven bowel movements per day. Uh, so just because you've had an ileostomy and your colon removed with Crohn's disease doesn't mean that you have an ileostomy for the rest of your life. And finally, uh, the third most common disease that we see in patients with Crohn's disease are, uh, is perianal disease or perianal fistulas. And these can present with abscesses, uh, draining uh, tracts, and fistulas. Uh, and the management of perianal disease uh, in uh, Crohn's patients really involves two main points. And the first point is we have to take care of the infection and get rid of the infection. And the second part is to take care of the Crohn's disease or treat the Crohn's disease mm -hmm. adequately. So to manage the infection, that usually involves an examination under anesthesia, uh, drainage of an abscess, uh, maybe placement of a seton through a fistula tract. Um, and a fistula is a, a connection that connects two things that shouldn't be connected. So for example, in a Crohn's disease patient, that could be the rectum to the skin. Uh, so uh, the way that's usually managed in a Crohn's disease patient is uh, an examination under anesthesia and a placement of a seton. And a seton is usually a plastic string that is put through that tract and tied so that the, the tract stays open. And the purpose of that is to uh, allow drainage of the infection and treatment of the infection uh, with some antibiotics. And once we have that infection under control, then the gastroenterology team is able to then control the Crohn's disease with hopefully a, a biologic agent such as Remicade. And that gives us the best uh, chance to uh, get that fistula to close. And in general, those cetons that are placed surgically are, are in place for three to six months. Uh, and once the Crohn's disease is, is uh, well controlled and the fistula is healing, then we remove those cetons right in the clinic and they tend to close uh, on their own. Uh, despite all of that treatment, there are some fistulas that are more chronic and do not close. And uh, there are more advanced techniques uh, that we use here at Mayo Clinic for those chronic Crohn's fistulas. Uh, some of them involve surgical. These days we're using stem